everything that was coming at me was at first more Prince Charming than it was actual jealousy and control, but the red flags were a hundred percent there. They were always there. Yeah. I love talking to colleges and university students um, when I travel around because I feel like it's their first opportunity to out of their parents' home to really get in an unhealthy relationship and to talk about all the things that I did wrong throughout my history of relationships and just say, these are the things you need to look for, you know, the control, the jealousy, all of those things are just going to get worse. And talking with young people, they ask so many questions and they're so interested. And I really love that age range. Yeah, I find, and I know you do a lot of work now, you know, traveling around and speaking about this. Is it, I guess, I mean, I imagine it's very rewarding to help these people, but was it, oh, I mean, is there any part of you, you know, like why, you know what I mean? Like, is there any part of you that like, here you are with me, is this hard? Like, is it hard to talk about over and over as you travel around and give these lectures and try to help the world? I pretty much cry every time still. And I think I cry because you almost made me cry just now. Um, I cry because I'm sad for that girl who spent so much time. Like I said, I look at it as another person really. And I think about knowing that anyone else could allow that many things to happen and that much torment to happen. And then anytime I talk about my daughter, you can just bring on the waterworks. And surprisingly, it still it still has that effect on me. Well, if you cry here, you won't be the first person to cry in the Behind the Velvet <laughs> Rope podcast. So we, we allow that. So you eventually filed for divorce. Do you... And then, right, so you, you filed for divorce and then shortly thereafter, Russell committed suicide. Correct. So then I, I mean, do you, this is neither here nor there, but do you go there and say, what if he didn't commit suicide? Like, were you really leaving? I was definitely leaving by that point, but I will say a really sad moment in that journey was when I was laying in the recovery room at Cedar Sinai with my mother and my best friend who had been on this long roller coaster with me, they were sitting with me in recovery and I was kind of in and out uh, on morphine, but I looked up and he came into my recovery room with roses and I was scared. And of course my family was scared. But at the same time, the sad truth is that in that exact moment, I wanted him to crawl in bed with me and just lay there with me. And that's something that anytime I have, anytime I decide to tell that story, it just brings so much heartache to me that you could have someone in your life that could hurt you so badly that you have just come out of the OR and you could still want that person to stay. And actually in that moment, when I was thinking that and processing that he was standing there, I thought this is a real sickness that I have. And this has to be the end of this. Because if it is that severe and I'm still willing to take him back, then I've really hit rock bottom here. Yeah. Like in a hospital bed. Yeah. Wow. Did watching back the show, I mean, I guess you've said this already kind of, but like, as you watch the show, did that lead to it at all? I mean, you know, it was, this was the final straw, the fracture, the fracturing of the orbital lobe. You know, you say you didn't recognize yourself. Like as you watch yourself back, do you think that like either directly or indirectly led to your courage to leave? Like just watching that girl on the TV? I think so. When I saw myself just mentally breaking down. And I remember Adrian saying to me, you are having a nervous breakdown. And at the time I was feeling like I'm having a nervous breakdown. Like this is it. I'm, I am shredded and there's nothing left. I'm, I felt like I was going crazy at that point. And I definitely watching it back was very hard. We blog about the episodes prior to them coming on. So we get the discs in advance and just having to watch it and know that that happened within the year was very, very hard to watch. I could only imagine. And then when this, you know, when Russell committed suicide, and this is just like, I find, you know, like you say the college students have a lot of questions. Like I find this all just very like, 
what range, I mean, is there a range of emotions that then go through your mind? In the moment that I found him hanging, um, I can't even describe the myriad of emotions. I mean, of course, shock is the thing that I think of most. Um, and where it didn't even seem real, I was so in shock that I thought, I don't even know if this is really happening. And after all I'd been through, you know, I was such an emotional mess anyway, that it was even hard to process, but you know, the 911 tapes are out, unfortunately in the world. And it's just such a traumatic thing to know what that moment was like. I can't even really describe it, except it was a combination of fear and shock and everything you can imagine. Yeah. And then I imagine your thoughts also then turn to your daughter. Correct. My daughter was with me. Um, she was in the car with my assistant. And as I was in the street screaming hysterically, um, I recognized, oh my gosh, I, my daughter is here. And he moved to an area that ended it. And I knew when the emergency services you're breaking up a little bit coming and everything that I had to get her out. And when I was finally composed somewhat that I needed to get my daughter out of there because the connect, hold on a second. I'll repeat yeah. all that. It just made, yeah. Sorry. It made, it made a weird connection. Yeah. You were like breaking up. Oh shoot. Hold on. I think like from the start of that whole thing. So to speak. Okay. Let me just see. Is that better? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, that that's good. It was good right up until I asked you that question. Okay. Um, about, you know, your daughter's there so that your thoughts must turn to Kennedy. Right. So when I was in the street and hysterical and finally had a moment to wrap myself around the fact that my daughter was in the car with my assistant and I just immediately went into a panic mode about how to get her out of the area before all the emergency service vehicles came and the police and everything else. I just knew it was going to be such a complete disaster and it was going to be so terrifying for her. So that was my next focus. And the minute I got her down the hill to safety, then I could go back into worrying about everything else, all the ramifications and the shock of it all. And then like when the shock of it all wears off, is there then, you know, relief? The next day when I woke up and I have to say, I had such a great group of friends around me. They spent the night at the house. The next morning they were there. My friend, Wendy Birch from KTLA was standing out front, managing all the media and paparazzi and everything, trying to stave them off. And I had two of my girlfriends were laying in bed with me. And I think everyone was just thinking as cracked as they'd seen me over the last year, like this was going to be the end of it. You know, this isn't going to be the end of her. So they were really guarding me a lot. Um, but when I first woke up, I thought this didn't really happen. And it was just so unfathomable to me to think that this was reality, pardon the pun, but um, it took a few, probably a few days to really have it sink in and to even get emotional about it. It was like, it, I was a real deer in the headlights for a while. And then you're emotional just because of a lot of things, but then is there that like relief? I don't know if relief ever really sat in for me. Um, I do remember a couple of my girlfriends saying, this is the best thing that could have happened for you. And when they would say that, I would feel horrible about that, you know, that I don't want to feel like this was something good for me, you know, but as far as a protection standpoint is what they meant. And that took me a while to think. I, I was really fortunate because often in domestic violence cases, the majority of the time when murder suicide occurs, that is, has a history of domestic abuse. So in recognizing that more and more and being so thankful that my life and my daughter's life were spared, I guess in those moments, I was somewhat thankful, but of course I wasn't thankful that someone lost their life. Right. That all makes a lot of sense. I mean, no one could blame you for having this range of emotions. I mean, it's a lot. Are you able to now, like, as you travel across country, like you wrote a book, you speak on this all the time, like, are you able to spot 
you know, characteristics, like if you're out, you know, hanging out with friends or at a dinner party, like, are you able to spot things like, okay, I see something here. I definitely think I'm more aware of 